Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, we're talking to a man who is a multi GC winning competitor, promoter, meat mogul, and now officially an event body official. Hey family, I hope you're well wherever you are and you got that thin blue smoke rolling. This is a super special episode. I'm stoked to be able to bring it to you. We've got Grant Coleman from Smooth and Smoky Salad Dodgers. If you're not familiar with that team name, that's his new team name. He was Manning Valley Natural Smokers before that. And uh, Wingham, I forget, Wingham... Ah, it was a couple of years ago. Wing him something before that. We'll ask him when he gets in. He can clarify that for us. Uh, before we get into that, though, a couple of quick announcements to run by you. First of all, I want to thank Jagged Woodfire for coming on board as our podcast partner for this episode. If you're in the market for a new smoker, a smoker oven, a uh, gravity-fed cabinet smoker, or you've got an idea for a, for a custom rig, make sure you do check them out. They do some fantastic work. Um, Glenn can build anything. If you can think it, he can build it. So make sure you check him out. Lovely people and all of their smokers too are championship proven with Jules, the other half of the team, recently winning the International Brisket Team of the Year for KCBS. So if you're after a smoker that's used by competitors and proven, make sure you check them out. Now, if you are just at the beginning of your journey, head on over to the smokinghotconfessions.com website and grab yourself the Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. That's our free ebook recently awarded at the MBBQA conference. It's everything you need to know to go from zero to hero in the world of low and slow. And it's, uh, it's a great read and it's really going to get you along your way. And I just want to say a great, um, a great welcome to all the people that have joined us for this live podcast recording on, uh, on our Facebook group, um, the Smoking Your Confessions Barbecue Community. So I can see we've already got uh, woo, quite a few people here already. Lots of people want to talk to Grant today. So uh, if you are joining us, make sure you do pop your comments and your questions for Grant in the uh, comments underneath the live video. We'll put them to him later on. And if you're not there yet, come and join us. It's the nicest little corner of the internet to be, and it is where we do all this live podcast recording. If you're catching this later on YouTube, do uh, give us a thumbs up, a subscribe, and hit that little notification bell. If it's on Facebook, give us a thumbs up, a share, and a comment. The shares in particular are really important. If you can share it with a friend, that'd be fantastic for us. Give us a little love heart and a follow on IGTV. Those little love hearts are so cute. And if you're listening on a podcasting app, give us a five-star rating and review, particularly if it's Apple. It's super important for us. It drives us up the charts. And speaking of the charts, in the last 30 days, we've been as high as number six in the US podcast charts for food and number three in Australia. So that's really important. And that's thanks to you guys giving us all those five-star ratings and reviews. Now, getting back to talking about Grant. Uh, whew, wow. One of Australia's most prolific and most successful competitors um, of all time, I'm just going to put it out there, has represented Australia three times at the World Barbecue Championships in Houston. And the year that I was there, he actually picked up second place in brisket. So he actually got to get up on stage in front of all those people. That was phenomenal. So we've got an absolute genius of barbecue here in Australia with us today. He's now organizing all his own events. He's got um, uh, smoking in the downs and he's recently registered as a as an SCA official. So we're going to see some more of that happening as well. But I think that's about all the introduction you need from me. Let's get Grant in here. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast with your host, Ben Arnott. How long has it been since your last confession? Hey Grant, welcome to the confessional, my friend. It is great to see you again. Good afternoon, Ben. Yeah, it's great to be talking to you, mate. I know. It, it feels like ages since we caught up. Um, we were just chatting off air and you were at Smokefest and I, I was there for about an hour each day and I just missed you, unfortunately. Yeah, on the Saturday I was doing the SCA uh, judging, my last uh, event before I qualified for the judging. So I did see you walk past a couple of times, and then Sunday we were pretty busy. Uh, that's what it, yeah. that's what it was then. You were in the official room. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. So tell me, mate, what was the last thing that you barbecued for yourself at home? <laughs> last thing I barbecued at home was be some pork ribs, mate. Some nice. Pork ribs. Sun pork, pork ribs, very nice. And tell us how you did them. So no, the normal way, you know, I still I still like to inject my pork ribs at home um, with a pork injection. Um, only about an hour before I actually uh, rub them and I 
always use um, pretty well the same rubs, um, usually a bit of hardcore carnival red and um, some killer killer bee, um, uh, Cosmos killer bee, honey killer bee. And that's about all I really use on my ribs. And uh, yeah, rub them, let them sit for about an hour. Then I cook them more or less, you know, three, two, one, somewhere around that time. Um, yeah, and then uh, wrap them, of course. We all know we all wrap these the pork ribs these days and some brown sugar in the bottom, a bit of maple maple syrup and you know, what sauce that you like and wrap them and, uh, in foil and then uh, cook them to the temperature, you know, about 204. So it's just where you, knife, you run the knife down the bone and it just pulls off nicely and then take them out and glaze them with the sauce that you've actually just cooked them in and, and um, cut them. And beautiful. Mate, sounds good. M- makes you want to go and cook some pork ribs right now. Delicious. It's um, it's funny the big difference that just switching from honey to maple syrup makes. I was cooking some here a while ago now and went to the cupboard to grab the honey and, oh, there wasn't any honey. So uh, I grabbed the bottle of maple syrup, threw that in and went, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we always used to use honey. Um, but, yeah, no, uh, use maple syrup now. Um, always use the good maple syrup, not the... Imitate, you know, the cheaper ones always use the nice maple syrup. And, you know, sometimes as well, a little bit of Coke in that wrap um, just helps get that brown sugar working and gives that good flavour. Yeah, beautiful. So is that your your favourite thing to cook and eat? Yeah, it is. Pork ribs or chicken, they're my two favourite. I love chicken too because chicken, you know, there's so many different flavours you can get in your chicken. That's what I love about it. Yeah. And do you do the, uh, do you go the whole way and uh, scrape all the chicken skin at home? I uh, used to go all the way and scrape tri- chicken trims, uh, skins, but now I'm um, just jack- Jakarta. Now I don't scrape any chicken ju- in comps or anything no more. Oh, really either? Oh, wow. Change. Make it easy for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Th- there's our first hot tip for the episode. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. And so what's your favourite barbecue to cook on at home? Um, I'd have to say uh, we, we're all we're, – Known to have the big radar hill smoker, um, but, you know, it's a bit hard to pull out all the time. But, um, you know, after a few years following uh, grillers in the mist, cooking on GMGs and trying to knock Gareth off, um, I thought, well, I might as well join the club. So I actually uh, purchased one of the older GMGs and um, currently now we cook on three GMGs. Wow. So you're, you're a full convert to the pellet grill? I am, mate. I am, yeah. I, I do like them. They're very good. Yeah, right. Is it is it purely the convenience, or is there is there subtleties to flavour that you don't get in a stick burner? Or, um, I personally, and as I say, I've said to a lot of people, I still believe barbecue and success in barbecue for myself is making sure that texture's right. And I believe you can get spot on texture with a pellet grill. Beautiful. Hard to argue with that. Now tell us how you um how you first got into barbecue. Well, it's an interesting one. As you know, I run an abattoir, and I was down at Wingham in New South Wales, and uh, there was a girl that a lot of people know in barbecue, Demi Lolbeck. Um, she was in MLA rep, and uh, she used to come to the plant, meat and livestock um, Australia, and she was the in charge of MSA in them days, and uh, she used to she kept telling me about these two blokes in Port Macquarie running this competition, and. And uh, well, I should come and buy a smoker and uh, get into it. So I love cooking barbecue and different things, but nothing like low and slow. So, um, so a couple of weeks after, I went up to a festival at Port Macquarie, a beer and music festival, and um, Brad Hodge had just turned up with his brand new Radar Hill that he just purchased off Rob, uh, the big red and black one. And uh, I was just went, oh my god, this is what I want. <laughs> uh, when I rang Rob, I contacted him straight away, not buying a 20-inch 20 um, just on normal wheels and uh, nominated for the Port Macquarie comp, and that was my first comp, and, and uh, convinced Dash to come along with me and said, let's go and see how we go. Wow, so you guys had that, um, that big trailer smoker radar for your first comp? No, no, I had the 20-inch, the first comp. Oh, sorry, 20-inch, sorry. Yeah, yeah, the little 20-inch, and... Uh, we done that comp, and Rob actually come and spent a bit of time with us because we were right beside the Flame and Mongrels. That's how we met them fellas, and uh, and had a good time. And um, while we we're there on the Saturday night, I said to Rob, "We've got to got to go to a trailer." 
let's design something. So that's why we sat there over a few beers and designed the, the green and black um, Radar Hill Smoker. So good, man. That that thing's legendary at this stage. I think it's probably won more trophies than, than most other smokers in the country. Yeah, look, they're great. They're a great rig, and uh, he done a great job on them. And it's just unfortunate that he's not around to do some more for some other people. But there's some, you know, really good rigs around now as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just to clarify for those uh, listeners and viewers, uh, Rob is still around. He's just not around making barbecues. We're not. Uh, we're not um, uh, incorrectly s- suggesting that he's no longer with us. He is definitely still with us. He's just not making barbecues. Yeah, no, he's happy retired and. Uh, Living up at Noosa, mate, so he's enjoying life. Mate, it is a good life for sure. And so that, that's how you got into, into competition barbecue. And from there, you, your team has gone through sort of three phases. You were uh, Wingham, and I forgot the name in the introduction, sorry, Wingham. Yeah. So we're meeting Valley Natural Smokers first. That's where we first kicked off. And, oh, that was first, um, okay. We we're probably there for, you know, three, three and a half years um, and done the first two Houstons as um, meeting Valley Natural Smokers. And then the same company um, brought out the Angus Reserve brand um, in Costco and different places like that. So they asked us to take on the Angus Reserve and Angus Reserve Barbecue, which we've done that for the next 18 months, yeah. That's what it was. I was, I was mixing up the Angus Reserve name, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, and, and so now you're, you're in as uh, smooth and smoky and you've moved to Queensland. Yeah, moved to Queensland 18 months ago and live in Toowoomba and work out at Oki, the Abattoirs there. And, um, yeah, and uh, oh, look, I, I was parting from Ash and Steve and Mark. We all went our different ways and it was going to be very, very difficult to keep going how we were, you know, set up. And, and more or less, Ash went and worked for Full Throttle Barbecue, as we all know now. He's a big master down there, doing a great job of that place. It's unbelievable. Uh, Mark moved up to Bribey and I moved to Toowoomba. Steve's still down at um, Tumby Meats, which is an absolute magnificent butcher shop him and his father own. And, um, yeah, moved up here and uh, I'd more or less, you know, thought, well, I won't keep doing barbecue competitions. And uh, Demi convinced me to take on the SCA rep role. So that's what I've been doing for the last, you know, six months. Um, but, yeah, a few boys from work convinced me to, you know, we'd love to have a go. They'd never been to a barbecue comp and um, never cooked a couple of things at home but never really had a smoker. So I said, well, okay, I'll give it a go, but you fellas got to you know, put their hard, hard yards in. It's not all about me. So that's how we kicked off. Fair enough, yeah. And if you're new to competition barbecue, there'd be no mentor better to have than yourself. They're very lucky fellas. Yeah, look, it. And then, as, as I say, you know, they are lucky fellas, but, you know, in barbecue, as you know, mate, um, I'm happy to share anything with um, any any person that wants to come and ask a question or learn anything. You know, I was Mark, myself, and Ash were very, very lucky when we went to Houston to meet a bloke by the name of Denny and Corey Mikes, um, who were Fat Boys Barbecue, who took us in, um, Jess Pryles introduced us to them, took us into their restaurant and, you know, showed us a hell of a lot in um, barbecue in the US and, you know, and as he said to me, I'll show you everything, but it's up to you to cook it and present yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, just writing a note of that down. I'll have to go check them out online. Denny and Corey, Mike's Fat Boy Barbecue. Cool. Yeah, now speaking, speaking of Houston, you, you got to go there three times. That's amazing. 2018, 2019, and 2020. So, Tell us about that. Uh, well, start with 2018. Let's uh, let's start with that one. Yeah, 2018. Um, we we got. We, I think you had to run in the top 20, and we were lucky enough to get pulled out of the hat. And I think yourself and um, your team that went over as well. And um, it was a huge eye opener to uh, both of us as teams, um, especially when you get there and you know there's 350 odd teams sitting there and. Uh, 40-something acres and you think, oh, a lot of barbecue teams here and then then you get the map and see all the roads and, you know, you think, oh, it's not that big, but then you start walking you only find, you know, a quarter of it. Um, So, yeah, no, it was massive. The first, um, as soon as we stepped foot on the grounds, it was unbelievable. Yeah, I I was there that year. You are right there. That was um that was year that we went over as well. And same thing, you know, you'd you'd say, oh, I'm I'm just going to go for a quick walk and just see what's down here and just get lost. 
And then, you know, an, an hour later, someone rings you and goes, uh, are you okay? Where are you? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I've been adopted by one of these teams and I don't know where I am. Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, that's one of the big things over there, which you will learn as well, and especially of your podcast and how, you know, any one of those teams and people over there, they're so friendly. They love Australians and they just share everything they do. They want to know everything that we do as well, but for the, how big in the history of barbecue in US, you know, majority of them bloke, people over there are just so passionate and just want to share with you to bring you along, you know, what they do week in, week out. Yeah, we were um, just amazed because we, they, they literally shared like their products with us. We met this, this one particular team and started hanging out with them and having a bit of a chat with them. And they said, oh, come back here. And they opened up this big freezer and they said, uh, pick whatever two briskets you want. And that was uh, Snake, Snake River Farms, Snake Valley Snake Farms, River Farms yeah. Snake, Snake River Farms. Farms. Yeah. And they, and they just gave us two Snake River Farms briskets. And then we met someone else and they, they gave us three racks of pork ribs. And so all the, all the meat that we just bought ourselves from the supermarket just down the street, we uh, ended up not using that. And, um, and uh, it, it was just great stuff that everyone was happy to share and, and, and share alike. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, year on year on, and as you got to know more people, it's, it was the same thing. All I wanted to do was, you know, introduce you to more products, their rubs, their sauces. So you'd go over, you know, with an empty bag and you'd end up down at Walmart buying two or three bags so you could bring everything home. Yeah, yeah. I um, we packed suitcases inside of suitcases because we knew we were going to end up uh, bringing extra luggage home. So um, that was the year that you got uh, your your first big call up there. And uh, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, it was um, it was pretty amazing time for us. Um, you know, during that week, we we as you know, you know, you get over there on the Tuesday, Wednesday, and you start you know, tap in and. And uh, you start cooking, and we're in an international village in the middle of the whole barbecue. Um, I think there's usually about ten international teams, and usually about six of the champion on the champion row. Um, and uh, yeah, you start cooking each day. And, and as you know, we're very lucky. We had a couple of people in inside the international, and very good uh, helpers, uh, all of us, to uh, you know make us welcome and test our products that we we're cooking. And um, yeah, so we cooked for the first two days and changed a few different things. And we had this one one bloke that was very, very good, Martin and Chuck, both of them actually. And they come over and check our brisket out every time, oh, no, a bit more pepper, a bit more pepper, a bit more of this. And meantime, Ash hadn't even injected one of these briskets. How good they were, they were cooking. And so on the day, we actually done the full injection, um, everything like that. And, um, yeah, and um, we handed in. It looked good. When we first cut it, it was just fantastic. And uh, presentation over there is not as big as it is in Australia because presentation over there is like putting so many in a box, no parsley. Um, so it doesn't look as good, but the, 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 the taste and texture over there is what they really work on. And uh, we knew we had a good box, um, but, you know, there's 350 other teams there too that had a good box as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And so how did the um... – how did the awards process work? Did you, like, were you just standing around and then you got your name called out, just like a comp here in Australia, or was there, was there like a, a pre-notification, anything like that? Oh, well, so it's pretty amazing because they told us that, you know, about six o'clock they'd come around, which you have your head um, coordinators in your area, and they told us, you know, just hang around here about six o'clock and we go down and we get notified of the first, I think it was first 10 places in each category, three categories, and they go up on stage and not thinking any more about it. And we all just hung around there like everybody, all the international teams, and next minute all these whistles are blown and cheering going on, and then there's just lines of people coming and they're holding these signs up, you know, um, you're being qualified for a brisket, and they come straight through the international um, gate and you don't know where they're going to go because we're all there, as you know, 16 teams. And straight into our marquee comes one of the banners. And, and you know, before you could do anything, everyone's congratulating you. Let's go. You've got to go on stage. Like you couldn't even talk to those people. <laughs> straight away, let's go. Right, yeah. So they, they rounded you up and then took you down to the uh, to the front of the crowd right, right near the uh, stairs there. And describe the feeling of when they called your name? 
Well, when I went out, see, we had to go out the back and all the team went to the front. We went out the back and like well, here I am out the back with, I think there was 35 because of the desserts as well, five in desserts and 10 brisket, 10 pork and 10 chicken. And they were all around and Jamie Gear and um, Darren Worth and we'd met them. They were all there and, you know, all these other blokes that got to know eventually. And there's this one bloke standing there and he come over and wanted to know who I was and introduced myself and shook my hand and graduated myself and um, his name was Jeff Jeff from um, over there. And uh, so I actually, once we got organised, because there was so much confusion around the back, we didn't know what was happening. We got organised and we were up on stage and uh, and Jeff was there for, uh, he didn't know if he was there. Oh, he was there for pork ribs, that's right. And we were there for briskets. But he actually stood beside me on the stage. And, uh, yeah, I think brisket was last, as you know. So they went desserts, chicken, pork, and then brisket. And, you know, they get down third place, two places to go. And you think, oh, I'm just a, we're in the top 10. With How good is this? Unreal to be getting in the top 10. And then when they called us out second, it was just amazing, especially when you've got about 100-odd thousand people out in front of you. It was just crazy. It was wild, mate. It was wild. And I, I, yeah. I can only imagine what it must have been like to stand on that stage in front of that huge crowd. Oh, mate, it was amazing. Amazing. And uh, just to see the people out there and just to actually come second in a barbecue competition like that and hold that trophy up was pretty amazing And for Australian barbecue. The big thing was, you know, we, we took our own meat over. Um, we air freighted our own meat, um, which that was pretty amazing. And, you know, everyone can believe they bought Australian beef over here, come second. And I think it was like half a point we got knocked off in for brisket to win the brisket. So it was pretty amazing. Yeah, it was so close. It was unbelievable. So um, that that then got you uh, an automatic invite back in 2019. Tell us how you went the next year. Uh, so the next year we um, we went over. Um, we come. I think we ended up coming about 79th or something in the in the following year. Um, but we didn't get a call. Um, but it was still a fantastic you know uh, week of barbecue, and you know we already knew a lot of people, so you know, go back and visit the all the people in their marquees and the teams and we, we had some great times. Um and uh, I actually, as we say, we took our meet over again and uh, uh Jeff and that um said to me, How about bringing me a brisket over and I didn't say anything to it, so <laughs> I just shipped the meat over and we were down there having a drink and before we all got into the trimming for the main day and when I walked in he's got a big esky, I just put the es- brisket in the esky, I didn't say any more. As I was walking out, I said, I left you a present in your esky. And uh, I said, oh, beautiful, mate. Anyway, um, bugging me dead, presentation. Here he is up on stage with brisket. And he wins brisket. So two years in a row, we got second and then first with Australian English Reserve brisket. Oh, wow. So, pretty amazing. It was, And then, you know, it was just like two years in a row, uh, pretty big parties, great times. Um, yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah, and then you um you got drawn again for twenty twenty. What are the odds of uh of of being drawn again? That's yeah, that's incredible. Because no, we we hummed hard about you know even putting our name in for that one because Ash was a bit um, I don't know if I can go and Mark said oh, I'm not, I cannot go and Steve said oh let's let's put our name down anyway let's have a go I'll go with you. So we did and we got called out. So there's a two of us going and uh, Daniel Barrett went as well. Um, big smoke. And uh, so we and uh, so we said, well, let's go. And uh, so I asked Gareth and our co from uh, Mongrels to come along with me. So the four That's of us. Right. Had, and uh, uh, we had a really, really good time. You know, we well, I think we come about 100, 120 or something out of the 350. But experience for them, two other blokes as well. And we actually, um, Dan was beside us, as you know, we're all in the international tent. And um, Luton and Booty come and cook with Dan. Um, so we had a, had a ball and learnt so much, um, on that week of barbecuing again. Yeah. Sterling's awesome. What a, what a great opportunity there. And you know, that Sterling, he's, he's amazing, Ben. I'll tell you a quick story. We're cooking in drums. So we had a drum each and we had, we had the Lone Star Pit and they had the GMGs and GMG bought everything there for us. And Gareth used the GMG, done his ribs. And they were cooking the chicken on drums, as you know, the half chickens. and. I don't know what Sterling done, but he, we're mucking around and he's cooking the chicken for the comp 
and he's got it on the rack and he tw- he always twisting it around and next minute chicken's down the chicken's in the charcoal it's <sighs> straight off the rack so still he's oh. dive straight in because like it was near not far from hand in straight in pulled all the chook out he's got it he's brushing it off put it in i think he come 11th <laughs> <laughs> it's very well charcoal. <laughs> yeah, nice. that's it, it's the very definition of charcoal chicken. Exactly right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, twenty twenty, then that was the competition that got called off part way through because of all the craziness that started happening last year. Did you manage to finish the barbecue festival before that happened? Yeah, we we finished on that um, Saturday night of normal, as you know. Um, when we were actually flying out early on the Sunday morning, we didn't stay for the next day because we were getting back home. So we'd um, got up, Rocket dropped us off at the airport and we flew from um, Houston to LA. And um, and our wives were telling us, you know, it was ramping up. Sorry, it was ramping up. Um, so we flew over there and, and when we got over to LA, all our flights were cancelled and, you know, we didn't, how are we going to get home? Here we are sitting in, in uh, Qantas and, Next minute, oh, yeah, we've got one flight. So we all, the flight was absolutely chock-a-block. So we all jumped on the flight and got home. And uh, we just got home and then we heard the news that had been cancelled the day after we left. So, yeah. Wow, that was lucky that that they that you were able to get on a flight because I know there were lots of people that got um, got completely stranded. My wife's friend got stuck in the UAE and they the airlines kept making her buy a new ticket and then cancelling the flight. It ended up costing her $30,000 in cancelled plane tickets just to get home. No, we were very lucky. We were very lucky. We were lucky that we weren't staying another day. Otherwise, I think we would have had some difficulties. If you're looking for your next barbecue smoker or grill, Jagged Woodfire has got what you need. Owners Julianne and Glenn are multiple award-winning barbecue competitors who have even travelled to the US to compete at the World Barbecue Championships in Houston, Texas. Based out of Perth and shipping nationwide, Jagged is one of the largest pit builders in the country and has an ever-growing lineup of meat cooking machinery. Not only do they have their now famous smoker ovens, their incredibly efficient gravity-fed cabinets are proving extremely popular in commercial settings, and they also make some of the most stylish asado grills you're ever going to see. Jagged is also well known for amazingly detailed custom work ranging from backyard designs all the way to installations in commercial kitchens. Proudly Australian designed, owned and manufactured, you can find out more at jaggedwoodfire.com.au, spelled J-A-G-R-D. Once again, head to jaggedwoodfire.com.au, spelled J-A-G-R-D, to learn more. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. Alrighty, so that kind of rounds us up now to to where you are now and, and what you're doing now. So tell us a bit about how, how 2021 competition circuit's been for you. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's been really good. Um, as, as you introduced us earlier, we started out with a name. We had to come up with a name and... You know, as we all all know in barbecue, the, the conversations around the salad dodges and and uh, that's the word. So I said to the boys, "Well, we've got ourselves smooth and smoky salad dodges," and they all laughed and, and it stuck. So we we kicked off and thought, "Well, let's go." So you know, that's that's what the name come up with. And uh, yeah, we've been uh, doing a few competitions and we're going going quite well at the moment. So enjoying it very much up in here in Queensland. Yeah, give us a bit of a rundown of of some of those competitions. Well, our first our first school our first comp was um, Harvey Bay, um, which is a very very good comp um, in the little resort there, and you got your own swimming pool and everything. It's very humid, but it was very good. And uh, I think there's 25 teams. I think we come 23rd out of 25. So that was the introduction to the boys. And and you know we got a, we were very lucky there. The boys won um, one of the SCA handings uh, for the competition for the first one, and we're actually lucky we we got a perfect score in our beef short ribs for that comp as well so it was a great comp oh mate you got to talk about those beef short ribs you got a perfect score yeah no it was good i've always um wanted to do some beef short ribs and uh, i sent you a photo of them there uh and you know lucky enough working in one of them uh, 
an abattoir where you can, you know, cut the bones and do different things however you would like to do them. And I've always wanted to present them like that photo and uh, six pieces and six nice bits of short rib on the bone. And, uh, yeah, no, it was actually quite an interesting story. That one, Mick Tyrrell was up there cooking with, uh, I uh, bought the big new red pit up there and uh, I walked Rosie. around hand in and, and Mick said to me, he said, uh, he said, oh, I've got a good brisket, Grant. And I had a bit of a grin on my face and he said, so have you, haven't you? I said, oh, yeah. All right, and we come second. I knocked him off. Come first. That was great. Nice, nice, very cool. And so, where did you head after Harvey Bay? Um, Harvey Bay. Um, we we organised our own competition uh, for the Oakey Show at Smoking the Downs, and uh, yeah, we, we done quite well there. Um, we actually took out uh, Grand Champion there. Um, and just just pip big smoke. Um, and the Radar Hill Rep Bags had a team there, which was Mark Ash and Rob and Greg Dean, and they come third, and it was very, very close. So, you know, it was a really pleasing result for the boys and, uh, you yeah, know, kicked us off to a good start for the year. Yeah, those top three teams with those names, that's the that's the pointy end of the spear right there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. tell us about um, about smoking in the downs then, because you were the promoter and you were the competitor. How – how or oh, why did you get into promoting? Because you, you you did a couple, didn't you? You did some in Wingham, um, and yeah. now you've done this one in Oakey. Yeah, I done I done three years in a row down at Wingham. At, you know, when they had the festival down there, we'd run smoke in the valley for three years, and you know, I always organise about you know three th- thirty teams in the comp, um, which is a good number. I think. Um, so I run down there for three years and didn't do anything last year, and and the opportunity opportunity come uh Oki show committee come and ask me would i run a, a competition for them um and i said yeah i would do it for the Oki show um the show is only a very small area and it's only a small community and everyone was asking about barbecue so i got a little committee together with people around town and um we'd run it for the bar um, for the actual Oki show um and it was a, you know, we had 30 teams and it was a really good call right how did the public react to it did they seen anything like that before no, they'd never seen anything like it, and um, I think they uh, the comments were it was probably one of the biggest Oki shows they've seen. Um, you know, a long time since two years since they've had a show as well. So there's a lot of people um, that hadn't, I suppose, haven't been out, and um, the you know they had a lot of uh, fireworks and different things for the kids as well. But you know, it really um, the, the the crowds were very very good. Yeah, that's fantastic stuff. Yeah, so. Did you find that there was much of a difference in between like different uh, local councils and rules and regulations between New South Wales and Queensland? What was there? Uh, what were some of the biggest differences or challenges that you had to face? So hosting a competition when we're only doing it for judging um, and following the ABA rules um, and the SCA when you do SCA, if you follow them rules, um, the council you just notify the council, which I've been pretty lucky because I've been doing them with events as well, been partners with events so they more or less take over that but you let them know that you are holding an event you do not sell the product and if there's people there selling product they do the their council licenses and food licenses and things like that but no pretty similar from new south wales and queensland to host an event just for barbecue oh okay that's good to know now speaking yeah. of um of putting on these events and we've just talked about how how Oki was the biggest show that they've ever had one thing that you're really passionate about is about introducing new people and sponsors to competition barbecue could you tell us a little bit about how you like to go about that and and what makes you so so passionate about it yeah well uh, I'm passionate about it because you see you know your, all your barbecues galore your Weber and all these different stores popping up now selling rubs and and a lot of a lot of them haven't competed in barbecue. Yes, there's a lot of home cooks and you know follow your podcasts and different podcasts and read read recipe books and everything like that. But you know once once you go in, like I was lucky enough in Toowoomba to you know meet a few different businesses there, Weber, um, top of the town, which is, sells the GMVs and a few different butcher shops, and start explaining what you've done in barbecue and, and what you can bring for them and help them out as well. Um, they start to see and really get more in depth of, you know, what people are looking for, you know. It's not just the run-of-the-mill stuff. If you can get some of the stuff that the teams are using and put on your shelf and, you know, they, they, they walk through the barbecue competitions and see Cosmos and, and most of us have our rubs out or four monkeys or something like that. And if they've got them for sale, 
you know, it brings people back into their business, you know, especially in that local. You can buy it online, but how good is it to be walking into a local business and supporting your local business? And, you know, getting them involved is, is one of the aim that I really like to try to do. Yeah, that that's absolutely great advice there. And how good is it that, that we're able to put, you know, that the Australian barbecue scene is now at such a level where we're saying four monkeys in the same sentence as Cosmos. How good is that? Oh, well, look, you know, look, I think, what, two or three weeks ago, four monkeys, his pork has come, what, eighth in the, in the world in, in rubs. And, you know, Cosmos over in the US, as you know, is one of the probably leading leading rubs. So, you know, Dan at Big Smoke's done a fabulous job and, you know, he supports us and, and uh, you yeah, know, we support him and he's done so well. He is absolutely crushing it, no doubt about that at all. Now, there's been a bit of a a bit of a surge in Queensland in barbecue in in 2021. What would you like to uh, to uh, to tell us about that? Well, it's quite interesting because when I was in New South Wales, like all the Queenslanders, as you know, used to complain about not having many competitions. But in the in the last six or seven months in Queensland, I think we've had more competitions than any other state. And, you know, most of them competitions are averaging around that 30 teams, which is a really good number. And, you know, I, I think Queensland's really um, stepped up and the promoters have stepped up. And I think I think it's really important that we do support our promoters. You know, we all have different ways. Like I, I promote it just for the barbecues. You know, you've got Julian, he's got a business. But, you know, these people have to step up and run these competitions, and they are, so we just need to support them. And, of course, we're going to do something wrong or something's not going to suit someone. But at the end of the day, we have an event. And like I think what we've had six or seven events in Queensland this year. How good's that? We've got a double header coming off to Townsville this week, uh, this weekend, flying up Friday night to do Townsville, back to a double header in Brisbane the weekend after. So, you know, how good's Queensland at the moment for barbecue? It's so good, mate. It's so good. Now, so you're actually going to FIFO the competition up in Townsville. Have you lined up like gear you're going to borrow up there and all that sort of stuff? Oh, uh, yeah. We've got a bloke towing our trailer up for us and um, <laughs> we'll be up, he'll be up there. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to fly up. So I'm pretty lucky. I've got family up there, daughter up there at the moment. So I'll be going up to see her as well. But um, pretty keen to go and see JD and JT and do the comp up there. Mate, it's a ripper of a comp. I was up there in 2019. It's just a beautiful spot. You're going to have a ball. Yeah, no, I, I was lucky enough to be up there early in the year and had a look where it is. And, yeah, no, Dan White told me it's one of the best. So can't It's wait so to go. good. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, we were just talking about how many comps there are in Queensland at the moment. I was talking to Lucas last weekend uh, from, not Rolling Smoke, Jack's Creek Barbecue yeah. Team. And um, we were having a bit of a rundown of the competitions that he's done. And of the six or seven that he's done this year, five of them have been brand new competitions and five of them have been in Queensland. That that's is, correct. That's phenomenal growth. Phenomenal it is, growth. It is. It is. And it's good to see Lucas travelling up. You know, he's been to most of the events I've put on and, and we have a good relationship and, you know, he supports a lot of events and, and uh, yeah, no, it's, and, you know, there's a few more coming up as well, I think, that'll pop up. I think there's one at Mackay on the same weekend. There's one of the, or no, the, one of the weekends either side of um, Bacon Fest. So there's another one in Mackay. So, you know, there, there's more and more in Queensland. Yeah, yeah. Now, is, is Bacon Fest one of your competitions? Yeah, no, no, no. That's some pork they run that themselves with the community of King Arroy. Oh, okay. Um, right, right. I, I just thought that that was one of yours, but um, it must just be because I've seen you there so many times. Yeah, no, I've been there the last last three competitions they've had. We've always supported because of we've been lucky enough to have some pork on board as our sponsor for pork, and uh, we always go back and make sure we can do that event. Beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful. Now, one of the other things that you did mention earlier on was that you have um, recently become the Queensland rep for SCA. So, uh, congratulations on that. What um, what has drawn you to becoming a rep for the SCA over say? becoming a rep for the ABA after, after such long success in low and slow, you're becoming a rep in the, uh, in the hot and fast. Well, I still enjoy my um, low and slow, okay? So I'll, I'll, I'll always want to compete in, in that type of competition. But, you know, working in abattoirs all my life and um, all the brands around and all the stakes around and, uh, these days, um, I'm just pretty passionate about, you know, doing an SCA, the state competition. I've been lucky enough, as you know, Brett was, 
spent a bit of time with us in Texas when we were over in Houston and got to know him quite well. And um, I just really like that competition, that state competition. Um, I think it's you know, it's pretty special. Um, some of the steaks that these blokes cook, cook and the flavour uh, is pretty amazing. So I, I really enjoy that side of things. But in saying that, you know, I just think, you know, I'd love to take to the next step in Queensland where we can run SCAs by themselves. It doesn't have to be an ABA where we can do a couple of days of SCAs at you know, certain pubs or venues um, to make it that, more of a state competition. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. That's um, it, it's becoming quite the thing in the states. You'll see uh, like a double Saturday and a double Sunday type uh, type event, and the the opportunities for creativity are, are just absolutely wild. So, what was involved in in becoming the Queensland rep? Did you have to do like a full training course and all this sort of stuff? Yeah, I done I done actually four events under Demi Lovac. Um, so I had to do the four events and had to learn to um to do the judging, to do the promotion and train the judges and yeah so I had to go right from the whole step of you know judges competitors presenting everything to them um and then doing the scores uh and then presentation of course so yeah no it was it's it's a fair bit in it um but it's it's a really award uh rewarding task and um I really enjoy it, and especially being in Toowoomba. There's so much um, meat industry around here in Toowoomba, and I just think it, it's a place that can really take off. Yeah, yeah. So are we going to see some more events from you this year, or are you going to be uh, spending the next six months kind of planning out 2022? Um, I think we're going to try to. I've been talking to Bluebird and a few of them. They're pretty keen to run a few more um, SCA events, so, and Daniel White. So we're just looking for um, – we're not really interested in running ourselves, but trying to bring people along with – you know, hotels or barbecue joints to um, try to, um, you know, encourage them to have competitions and try to encourage more backyard people to come and have a go at these state comps. You're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd Ben Arnott. Alrighty, Grant, now we're in the third segment of the show here, and this is the part of the show where our guests uh, impart some wisdom for the viewers and the listeners out there, and then once we're done with that, we're going to start uh, rolling out some of the uh, live viewer questions that have been coming through over here in the Facebook group. Um, so if you are watching live on Facebook uh, during the recording of this, make sure you start popping those questions in the comments there, and I'll put them to Grant when he's finished sharing his wisdom. Now, Grant, you are going to talk to us so many things. Like you've you've done so many things across the whole barbecue industry, right from the abattoirs to the competitions to international representation to so many things. And today, you're going to talk to us about events and promotions, which I'm super excited to hear about because you've got four or five years of experience now doing this. So I'm going to throw it over to you. You can uh, share some wisdom, and I'll just pop in with some questions as things uh, as things trigger in my mind. Yeah, thanks, Ben. But I think um, there's two sides of it. You've got your ABA competitions and you've got your SCA competitions. And um, anyone listening that you know knows people that's got small businesses or you know hotels or anything like that or a nice area or a show coming up or a, a festival, um, they're not that difficult. And truly, and honestly, you know, I'm more than happy to help anyone, give them advice. But your ABA and SCA got a great you know set of rules and uh, how to run a competition, um, especially with like ABA, um, there's not a lot. A lot of teams aren't looking for huge, big prize money. They're looking for an event where they can go and enjoy and they get treated as the barbecuers. And that's one of the things that I always try to do, to look after the barbecue teams and try to do something a little bit special for them to make them a part of it. You know, at Oki this year, I had 30, 32 teams and, I got all the team captains up and uh, up in front of everybody and I had a steak, steak dinner and that for everybody on the Friday night. And, like I didn't know half the Queensland teams, but we got them up in front with the PA, introduced their team, who they are, where they are, what they've done. You know, even Adam Roberts and Adam Rothwell were there, so we made them. Because a lot of people didn't even know who they were. So, you know, I just wow. tried to put something out there for them. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so the, the teams are obviously all, all happy to do that. That's, that, that's incredible. Well, they were. Actually, it was a bit of a shock because we had this barbecue and had these beautiful steaks that was cooked by the boys. And, and uh, then I asked all the captains to come forward and 
put the mic in front of him. We had questions for him. So, but they uh, they all volunteered, and it was actually very very good. Oh, I I thought you were trying to say that you surprised that that you just sort of surprised them with it. No, but uh, you, oh, you, you you had given them warning. We, we, no, we didn't give them any warning until they were all lined up. So, so <laughs> uh, yeah, no, they were good though. Were That's good. awesome. But but you know, as I say, you know, if you know, you don't have to have a lot of money in prize money, and you know, the ABA have their set minimums, and the SCA have their set minimums, and you know, once you get your teams and understand what your costs are. Um, you know, you can pick up one or two good sponsors, um, which don't have to be a lot of money as well, but some good prizes as well. Um, and, you know, you don't, as I say, it, it, you can just run a nice little comp and um, and more and more of them can come about in Queensland and, and New South Wales as well. It's better for our barbecue competition throughout the year and, you know, and it gets the name out there and promotes our products and everybody's, you know, what they're trying to achieve. And you know, I'm a big one for that. Anyone that you know wants to share something with us, we're more than happy to promote with them as well. Yeah, beautiful. Well said. Now, two of the things that I remember from the days when I was competing, one, two of the things I always looked for were hot showers and plenty of toilet paper. So what are some of the other things that uh, that are important for attracting competitors to a barbecue competition? Yeah, well, you're right. That's my favourite is the hot shower. You've got to have a hot shower to be happy and nice and clean. Um, they most of the teams, you know, like a good space. If you can give everyone an eight by eight or a ten by ten for an ABA competition, you know, that really makes people happy. And you know, the other thing is, is not make it too spread out. So you know, so the teams are closer together, and you just seem to have that much more friendly and barbecue and competition than being spread out all over the place. How do you sort of strike that balance, though, between giving them larger sites but then keeping them all together? Oh, but if you've got a, you know, 8x8, just, if you can make it like a horseshoe or or U-shape, it, um, it's just so much better, you know, for people that they you see each other cooking across from each other and you can bring the crowd in into the middle kind of thing instead of having rows and rows and rows and, and um, you know, everyone's so far away. Um, because a lot of blokes will, you know, and, and people, families will come and, you know, we all know, we all love to get together, have a yarn, have a drink the night before and when cooking comes, you know, it's serious. And But, you know, it's all about that friendship and mateship um, is why half, why the majority of us do it. Yeah, yeah, well said. Um, I, I, I really like that. So what are the, um, as a competitor, what was a competition that, that you went to that you went, Wow, as a competitor, I really love this event. And what was it that that made that event so special? Um, well, I'd have to say, I think, and you ask anyone that's been cooking for a while, you'd have to say when you first step into Port Macquarie, uh, the Port Macquarie barbecue was my first competition. Um, I think the first year there were seventy five teams or something down there on the water at Port Macquarie, which was close to home. You know, that, there was a lot of wow factors in that. And, you know, I know it was bigger, um, but, you know, that was my first one to say, you know, wow, this is what I'd love to be able to put different places around and, you know, go and compete in. Yeah, it's, it's amazing just how often those those Port Macquarie comps come up. You're the, uh, so I've, I've recorded four podcast episodes today. Three of them have been Aussies and all three of the Aussies have said Port Mac. <laughs> Well, it's all known. It was it was known as the home of the barbecue competition at Port Macquarie, and it's just a shame that it's not there. Yeah, I, I reckon that we're going to have to uh, uh, have a resurgence of it or a, a return of it at, at some stage. I don't know how we're going to work it out, but it's it, it's got to happen. Yeah, I think so. I just think you know the, the council's got to get behind it, uh, which is clearly what wasn't happening. So. Um, you got to get it. If the council get behind the competitions, it, it uh, helps out immensely as well. No doubt, mate. No doubt at all. All right, yeah. let's jump over to have a look at some of these questions now. Now, I'm going to start with. Uh, listen, this guy's a bit of a mongrel. Um, Brett wants to know: uh, Can you ask Grant if he has a comfy er chair? So I'm not sure what the story is there. Um, I'm assuming maybe Brett had a couple of uh, uh, buffalo traces and fell asleep in your chair, and then was a bit uncomfortable the next day. Yeah, he actually, he, you know, Brett, in the last 
few months ago we will come up and he'd done a couple of uh, events with me and different things up here around Toowoomba and we cooked out at the Abattoirs one day and we come home and we sat on the chair and had a few buffalo traces and lovely lounge I've got and put the lay back and about two seconds later here he was snoring his head off, didn't last at all. <laughs> He's a hard working man. I'd, I'd I'd imagine once he had a chance to relax, he was pretty exhausted. I still got the video of it too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice for for future blackmail purposes. Yep, for sure. Fantastic. It looks like we got a question from a promoter here. Uh, what's the biggest challenge you had organising the smoking in the downs competition, and what would you advise? Uh, what sorry, what advice would you give? for someone wanting to try and organise a comp in another small town area? Um, the biggest challenge, we were very lucky because we had the show ground, okay, and the show wanted to run the event, so they asked me. So the biggest challenge that is is partnering up with a an event. Once you're partnering up with an event, um, then that goes a long way. You, you covered your insurances and public liability. If you can tick that off um, with that event, um, that's, it makes that event so much easier and cost efficient to run. So that's the first thing I'd say in the smaller town. Mm, beautiful, yeah. Some some top advice there. Now this one, we're switching tack here now. We're going on a more of a meat-based focus. Uh, this person would like to know if there's any kind of regional differences um, between the Wingham beef and the Oakey beef. So sort of Queensland-based beef or New South Wales-based beef. You've got very different kind of uh, environments there that the cows are growing up in. What sort of uh, differences have you seen in the beef? Well, New South Wales, as we all know, down in that Hunter Valley and Menning Valley natural, Menning Valley area, is very well known for its grass-fed beef, that British beef, very, very soft beef. Um, so, you know, that grass-fed type of uh, animal down there is pretty amazing. Uh, Queensland grass fed, not quite as good, a bit drier, but still getting close to it. Um, in regards to the grain fed, um, you know, at Oakey, a lot more uh, uh, grain fed programs, um, you know, you know, English Reserve, Wagyu, where in Wingham it was more grass fed and a little bit of uh, the short fed and Angus products, but majority more grain fed up in, um, up in the Oakey area, Toowoomba area. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you'd be seeing a bit more marbling and all that sort of stuff in it then? A lot more marbling up here, yeah. A lot more bigger right. bodies. And, yeah, no. Interesting. Yeah, and sure. tell me about the Wagyu. So there's there's some Queensland Wagyu farms up here, are there? Oh, there's a lot of Wagyu. Wagyu at the moment is, is so expensive and uh, everybody's killing Wagyu and uh, everyone's buying Wagyu all over the world. It's It's quite amazing how it's just taken off in the last six months. Yeah, I, I went to my local butcher there the other day and he had some uh, some Wagyu briskets there and I really wanted one, but I had to walk away. It was nearly $300. So I, uh, my, my wife would not have been impressed if I came home with a $300 brisket. They are they are quite expensive, but they, um, they are very, very good to go low and slow with. No doubt about that at all, man. Look, all right, this is probably a good time for us now to um, to start wrapping up the uh, the show. So I'm going to throw it over to you now. Give some thanks, give some praise, give some shout-outs to people that have helped you out along the way and make sure you tell everybody where they can track you down on the internet. Thanks, Ben. Like, uh, you know, big, big thanks, you know. One of my, one of the the best, you know, mentor we've had is probably Jess Pryles. Is, um, once we've gone to America, she's... Uh, showed us around over there in Texas and Austin and uh, you know, what she's done for us has been very, very good as a team, um, especially, you know, Ash, Mark and Steve and Tumby Meats. They've been uh, very, very good to us. And as I say, you know, one of our longest sponsors was Tumby Meats and uh, and still Sun Pork. Sun Pork's amazing pork factory, amazing pork groups, amazing, you know, all the pork and they really, really get behind barbecue and, uh, you know, it's we're privileged to have them on board in barbecue. But uh, as you know, smooth and smoky salad dodgers, um, that's where we are. We're in Toowoomba. Uh, we've been around any competition. But as you know, Ben, more than happy to share anything with anybody. Ask questions. Don't be scared to come up and talk to us. And more than happy to. And if you need a hand to run a competition or some advice, please reach out. Money more than happy. You might want to be careful with just uh, how, how much... Uh you're you're saying that because we've got an invite just popped up on the screen here when is grant going to come cook on rosie with me so uh you, you, you're going to start getting invites to come guest on all these teams if you're not careful 
Uh, this fella, this fella, oh, Rosie, Rosie. Um, I still remember the first sun pork I'd done. He invited me out to his place and uh, met him. And uh, he's got one of the f most fabulous cookers in Australia at the moment. And yeah, look, I'd love to cook on that barbecue, but I'll, I'll make a date. It will happen. It will happen. Oh, there you go. You, you you heard it here first. Grant Grant is going to cook with Rod on Rosie. There you go. <laughs> Well, look, mate, thank you very much for your time. It's a Sunday afternoon. I, I realise I'm taking up your family time, so I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and best of luck with everything that you've got coming up um, on uh, for 2021 and into 2022. Um, are you going to be heading back to uh, Houston for 2022? Are you going to make it four in a row? No, mate, I don't think so. I, 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 Rob's been trying to get me to go with him if he goes, so I'll just see what happens. <laughs> Fair enough, mate. Look, thank you very much for your time, and I'll, I'll catch you around soon. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for everything, mate. Thank you very much. And there you have it, family. That was Grant Coleman from, uh, from the Smooth and Smoky Salad Dodgers. How interesting is that? After so much success, after so many wins, after representing Australia three times, he's now got a brand new team with three guys that he works with that have never been in competition barbecue before, and he's passing all that knowledge on. How good is that? That guy's absolutely tops. He's a gem of the Australian barbecue scene. All right, so that just... All right, so that's about a wrap for this uh, for this episode of the show. So before I let you go, I've just got a couple of announcements I need to remind you of. First is huge thanks to our podcast partners, Jagged, for uh, bringing this episode to you. They're, a, they're great pit manufacturers based out of WA. If you're looking for a smoker, for a smoker oven, for a gravity-fed uh, cabinet smoker, some of the most efficient, fuel-efficient smokers I've ever seen are those Jagged cabinets. They're unbelievable. Uh, custom work, Asados, I mean, you name it, Glenn can build it. Hit them up, great people, and they make great product. Um, also, if you're at the start of your journey, head on over to our website, smokinghotconfessions.com. We've got our free ebook there available for you. It's the Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. Check that out. There's some great stuff in there. It's going to take you from zero to hero in your barbecue journey. And again, a big thank you to everyone who's joined us this afternoon in the Smoking Hot Confessions barbecue community on Facebook. That's where we do the live podcast recordings. So if you want to be a part of it in the future, make sure you come along and join us in that group. It's a fantastic group. We all just hang out and talk about barbecue. It's family friendly and all the other guff is left at the door. So if you're looking for somewhere nice to come and hang out, which is sometimes rare to find on the internet, let's be honest, if you want to find somewhere nice to come and hang out, come join us there. It's really good stuff. Um, okay, so if you're watching later on on the socials, do give us all the likes and the shares and the comments. They're super helpful, really important, and we love you for it. And that is a wrap for today. So until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips, and Ben's own confessions. <laughs> <laughs>